Today we're going to learn how to make a custom Twitch notification with stream elements, uh, HTML, CSS, and your choice of After Effects or Photoshop. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you guys through how I made this custom Xbox 360 notification alert when someone follows me. So the animation was done entirely in After Effects and then all of the CSS and HTML was done inside of stream elements inside their built-in custom CSS editor. So for custom Twitch alert, there's gonna be two steps. The first step will be creating the graphic or animation that you want the alert to be based off of. And then the second step is creating the HTML and the CSS with the animation and the username fitting inside of your alert. So if you want your alert animated like this Xbox 360 alert, you'll have to do it inside of After Effects. But if you're not that trained in After Effects and doing animations, you can always do a 2D alert um, like this Pokemon alert I just made. But today we're gonna go over After Effects and how I animated it. So the first step was finding a YouTube video of the original alert that I want to copy um, and then just cropped it down to the animation. So the only asset that I pulled from Google is the Xbox logo that's inside of the animation. Um, I just Googled the Xbox 360 logo and pulled the one that looked the closest to the original one. Every other part of the animation I built um, directly inside of After Effects. So I'll run you guys through piece by piece on the different layers that I used to create the animation. So the animation I started off with a little gray bubble that starts out blurry then gets a little more defined. And that's what the um, Xbox logo sits inside. So you can see I faded in the Xbox logo. And just a note, when I was making this, I was doing it side by side with the original notification. So for animating the Xbox logo, I literally just copied frame by frame what the original Xbox logo did and did that to my Xbox logo. So next I added a shape layer that has three parts to it, two circles and a rectangle. The original Xbox 360 notification is pretty much that, just two circles on either end and then a rectangle in the middle. So I started off with a gray shape, you can see right here, and then to achieve the look of the original notification, I just added an inner shadow, a outer glow, an inner glow, and then a stroke. And then it kind of comes together looking like the same bubble from the original one. And then I just animated the rectangle and the circle um, simultaneously to match that of the original alert. And then I added a little bounce expression to the circle and the rectangle. Um, you, can, you can find this just by Googling After Effects bounce expression. So next you can see that a little crosshair animates in with the logo. And so I just created another shape layer and masked out um, the crosshair sign. And again, just animated it frame by frame on what the original one looked like. And then I copied that layer and added a green fill to it um, to match the green. Then I added a circle that's of a darker gray um, behind the Xbox logo. And then so when the Xbox logo fades away, it goes to this little man. And all I did was just get the pen tool and trace around the guy and um, faded him in and out. And then again, the same thing, when the logo animates out, I just took the crosshairs, scaled them up like they do in the original. You can see right here, the crosshairs hit the Xbox logo and then they scale down together. And then the bubble, um, I just animated the circle and the rectangle down again and then faded it out. That's pretty much it. So once you've made your animation inside of After Effects, um, you'll have to do a special rendering codec uh, called WebM. I'll leave a link in the description on where to download it, but it, this one's for Premiere, so if you just download that, it'll work for uh, Adobe Media Encoder. So after you install the web encodec, um, you can just take your After Effects animation, add it to a Media Encoder uh, render queue, um, and then you'll go down to the drop-down box and click WebM. So the settings I used for this animation, I did 60 frames, um, the quality all the way up, I disabled two pass, um, include alpha channel, that is the most important part. If you don't have an alpha channel, then it won't be transparent background, it'll just be a black video. And then I clicked ma use maximum render quality and then rendered that one out. And in case if you're wondering why it's blank, we're gonna add the text inside of stream elements with uh, some HTML and CSS later. And if you made your alert in Photoshop, you're just gonna wanna render your alert as a PNG with transparency checked and that's all you do. So the next important part is finding the right font for your uh, notification. 
So the font that is used in the Xbox 360 notification is actually already installed on all Windows computers, so you don't have to really do anything with that. But as far as like the Pokemon one goes, um, I just typed in Pokemon Red font, um, and this one came up. And so you're going to need that font file for the CSS here in a minute. All right, so now the rest of the work is going to be done all inside of Stream Elements with HTML and CSS. So let's go ahead and create a blank overlay. Um, so we'll add a widget alerts alert box. And first things first, let's go to position and size and make it 1920 by 1080. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to do a follow alert, but you can do the same thing with subscriber, tip, cheer, etc. So inside the following settings, we're going to go down here and click enable custom CSS. And this is what is going to allow us to make all these custom animations and fonts inside our alert. But before we edit any of the HTML and CSS, um, let's go ahead and upload the video that we made. So mine's already uploaded. It's uh, the first one right here. Um, but you just click the upload button on the top right and you'll be able to upload it. So whenever you enable custom CSS inside of stream elements, for some reason, it does not automatically change the video file that you choose. So we're gonna have to enter it manually. After you upload your video or picture, um, right click on it and do inspect. And then on the right side, there will be a link that links directly to the picture or video you uploaded. So I'm going to copy that and do not share this link with anyone else because this is your custom made alert. This links directly to it. And if anyone else gets that link, they'll be able to use that image or video for themselves. That's why it's blurred out on my screen. So we're going to go ahead and go into the um, HTML and we're going to paste the video where the default GIF is. Um, and then we'll have to change this IMG tag to a video tag. And so whenever we add a video, we'll have to add a auto play tag to automatically play the video. And then at the end of the video, we'll add a type video WebM. And this just lets, um, lets it know that it's a WebM video. Now, if you, if you upload an image instead of a video, you won't have to do all of that stuff. This is just for video settings. So now if we close this out and go to our alert, you'll see the animation plays. It runs all the way through, runs seamlessly. But the problem is that because we just did that, the username and is now following is below the video and you can't see it. So we're gonna have to do some transformation settings inside the CSS. So let's go over to the CSS tab and we're gonna take everything that Stream Elements, Stream Elements already has here and delete it because we don't need that. So now we have a blank slate for the CSS. So let's go over to the video and do a class equals, and this is kind of giving a nickname for the video. So we'll just call it video, makes sense. And then over in the CSS, we'll reference that video by doing period video, open uh, brace. And then this is where we're gonna do all the settings for the video. And the only settings that I did for the video was do a position relative and then close that out. And now we need to edit the positioning of the username and is now following. So if we go back into the HTML, add a new class right before the um, ID username container, we'll do class and we'll call this username. Now, if we go back into the CSS, we'll reference that username. And like again, this is gonna be all the properties of the username that we want to edit. So first things first, we wanna edit the position like we did the video. And this time we're gonna do absolute. And this allows us to put the text wherever we want on, th on the screen. Now to move the username wherever we want, we're gonna use top and left. And so this allows us to tell CSS how many pixels from the top and how many pixels from the left we want the font to be. So for my animation, I already figured it out. You have to play with it yourself, but I figured out that the text should go 117 pixels from the top and 1430 pixels from the left. Again, you have to play with this yourself um, and see what fits for your animation, but that I, um, I just typed it in, um, clicked the emulate follow again and just see where the text is and adjusted it like that. Next, we'll add a custom color to the font. This is a, uh, a light gray or an off white. We'll add a font size um, and I figured out mine was 33 pixels. And then we'll close this out and see what this looks like. So sweet. I mean, the username is inside the bubble. It's where it needs to be. It just doesn't have the right font. 
So now we're gonna figure out how to add our own custom font in CSS. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this from my original CSS file, but it's called font face. Um, you're just gonna type in at font face. Um, you're gonna type in the font family name of whatever your custom font is. Um, and then we're gonna import the uh, TTF file or the OTF file, which is the font file from our fonts folder, which is inside our windows, just by typing in URL fonts. And then right here, you would put the name of the file that you're creating. So in this case, my file name is Sego UI old TTF. And then I just put font weight and font style as normal, just as a force of habit. So now we've imported the font, but we need to go into our username and add that font family. So now that we did that, let's close this out and see what that looks like. So you see the color, the size, the font, everything is, uh, is right. So now we got the username, we're just gonna get the is now following on the second line below it. So we're gonna do the same thing as the class username we did, but go into the is now following, we'll do a, we'll do a div, do a class, and we'll call this um, following. So now, so now that we've named our is now following, we can go into CSS and we'll reference following and now we can do pretty much the same edits to this font as we made the, the last one, but we'll have to change the position a little bit. So just go ahead and copy and paste the, the settings that we had last time. I'll close out the uh, bracket. And then the top um, actually has a different um, position. It's 156 instead of 116, but everything else has the same settings. So we want it to look exactly the same as the username. So now if we close out, you'll see is now following is there right next to the username with all the same settings. So if you had a simple animation, this would be it. This is all you would have to do. Um, but because mine comes in and like fades out, we'll have to do some custom opacity settings inside CSS. So for our animation, we want it to fade in and out with the animation like the original Xbox 361 does. So I'll be real, I didn't know how to do this before making it. But what I did do is just type in CSS keyframe opacity. And there's plenty of tutorials on Google that you can find that will help you figure out what you want to do. For example, if your animation um, comes in from the top, you have to transform it. So what you could do is CSS keyframe transform. There's plenty of tutorials on how to do that. Or for example, like right here, it says scale. If your animation like grows in size, you can find tons of tutorials like that to fit your custom animation, but for mine, it's just a simple fade in and out. So after Googling for a bit, I was able to figure out how to fade in my text at the right time. So I just pasted it in, it's um, at keyframes fade in. And then how it works is you put the percentage of the keyframe that you wanna do and what value you want that keyframe to have. So from zero to 11.5%, uh, the opacity is zero. Um, and then from 11.5% to 13.5%, it goes from zero to one. So completely invisible to completely um, in the frame, whatever you want to call it. And so this is for my custom animation that I've made. So if you wanted to fade yours in, you'll have to time it with percentages just by playing around with it. So now that we've made the animation inside of CSS, we can add it to our text. So just type in animation fade in, which is what we called it. We'll do seven seconds because that's about as long as the Xbox notification is. And then we'll do infinite. I don't actually know if it has to be infinite. It probably doesn't, but that's what I did. And then we can copy that line and then add it to the following. So now if we go into our follower alert, you'll see it fades in perfect with the animation. And that is how I made the custom Xbox 360 notification. Um, it's, it was kind of a lot of work, but now that I know how to do it, um, it it's not too hard, but the, the, it's all about figuring out what you want your custom animation to be, and then figuring out how to do that inside of After Effects and inside of CSS. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, a lot of people were asking for it. And if you guys want to see any kind of other alerts like that Pokemon one I was talking about, um, let me know. And I would love to, you know, doodle around and try and do something like that. So make sure you subscribe. I'll leave my Twitch in the channel uh, description down below. Check me out on Twitch. Swing by my Twitch and try out the custom follow alert yourself. 
and you can see um, all the other custom follow alerts I do as well. So yeah, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.